So, hi. Hi. Um, you and I have become best friends uh, for the past few months because uh, you said I was your friend. Um, so no one's around here, but it worked. Yeah, I love Mikey shirts there. That's the sweetest thing I've ever seen. Um, so this is, I usually do Q&As after a movie. So we're doing it in reverse. We're going to do an A and Q right now and talk about uh, what you're about to see. At the end, um, Nick Fury comes out and says, <laughs> and then Nora like, joins the MCU. Was that like, crazy for you to experience? It was crazy, and the horror that turns into the gun is even crazier. Um, well, that, that's in a much more real sense. Uh, Sean Baker, uh, Tangerine, Florida Project, Red Project, and Helen Nora. Um, he's like really good at this movie making thing. Uh, how, how did you land the role? How did you learn about it? And now that your life is going to change forever, <laughs> how, is this, how have you been handling this, this ride? I, I think he's amazing too. Um, I have always loved his films, the characters that he follows and the kind of worlds that he creates. Uh, so I was a fan before I met him, but he saw this horror film I did screen opening weekend and was, I think, thinking about the idea for Anora and the story that he wanted to tell. And so he reached out like a day later and said, hey, I let me pitch you this idea. If you like it, I'll write it for you. And I was pretty flabbergasted, very excited. Obviously, I said, yes, I would like to do that. Thank you. Um, and now we're here. Uh, the film is, in many ways, an homage to my favorite Romantic comedy of all time, Pretty Woman. And that's actually a true story, it's my favorite rom com of all time. And this is like Pretty Woman, but imagine that like it was condensed into 25 minutes, and then Richard Gere was like a Russian drug lord, and then a lot of crazy stuff happens afterwards. Um, when you read the script, were you like, hey, it's a lot of stuff that happens over a crazy uh, week, week period? Uh, talk to me about how the shoot was, how long it was, everything that went awry. It's as crazy shooting as it is for them to watch it in a little while. Well, I'm excited for you all to see it. Um, it definitely is a wild ride. There's a lot that happens to my character within a short period of time, but she's a warrior. She has an incredible fighting spirit, spirit and that was something that I recognized right away, and I really wanted to implement into the story. Um, so, I mean, the shooting process was, it's, look, I mean, it's an independent film. We had, what, 35 days to shoot, I think? And there were lots of big set pieces and huge sequences that we wanted to accomplish. So, it was definitely very hectic at times, but I think as an actor, I embraced that. It, uh, I think it can only add to the character if you're involved in, in sort of a hectic shooting schedule. We're going to speak in code because we can't do spoilers, but I believe the ending of this movie, and I'm not, I'm not exactly, I think the ending of this movie may be for me one of the most perfect ending shots of like the last five years that I've seen. And it's like, my, like my key, for me, it's like Mikey Madison's contribution to cinema happens in the last like 60 seconds. Um, had, what was it for you at some point in your life? Do you remember the movie? Do you remember something that really kicked in for you? They said, I'd like to like, make art forever. Do you remember the movie that you were watching? Do you remember sitting on the couch? Do you, what, what was it that set this off <laughs> to take off the way you you're doing it now? I think there was a handful of films that inspired me, or at least got me into cinema. Um, I Stand By Me was a film that I was absolutely in love with. I think it was about the age that those characters were when I first saw it, and it just really moved me. I was watching these young actors play these incredible characters and experience this beautiful friendship, and 
share this connection, intimacy with each other, and I thought, wow, that's so interesting. I think I would like to somehow be able to experience that. Um, and I, I loved John Hughes films, like Pretty in Pink, Sixteen Candles, those were films that I loved and really inspired me. Um, so I think slowly over time, I sort of, uh, started watching more, more films and got more inspired. Uh, a lot of your, the, the ensemble in this film is remarkable, and they're uh, quite a cast of characters you're about to meet. Um, in particular, though, Mark, who plays uh, your love interest in the movie, uh, they all, this is not like anything we've seen before, even though it can feel like a familiar story, because it feels like Pretty, uh, pretty Woman, but it's like not. Um, what is something that you learned working on this that you're going to take with you forever into other roles that you take on in the future, such as when you come back from the dead and scream nine? <laughs> 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 Same time. Well, I'm sorry. <laughs> Actually, I'm coming back from scream ten. <laughs> I mean, I feel like I learned so much from this film, not just the making of, but also like the preparation and all the research that I did for this character. Um, my character is a sex worker, which is not a spoiler, it's the film centers around that and, and her profession. And through my research, I've been able to discover and like fall in love with that community and I've learned so much about that kind of life and it's really, it's just enlightened me and really brightened my life in such an incredible way. Um, I think I also learned a lot about my discipline as an actor and I don't know, I just, I, I want to feel the way I felt making this movie going forward in my other work because it was such an incredible collaboration and I worked with a director who really cared about my ideas and wanted to hear all of them, wanted to implement them into the story and was, yeah, he just really championed me, like I said earlier, so I don't know, I, I, I think I just, I learned a lot about who I am as a person, who I am as a creative and it, it was so uh, you're, in a, sorry, you're in a room full of uh, SCAD students, and you can yell if you're a SCAD student. <laughs> I instantly regret it, I was like, oh, this is a full house, so it's going to be so loud. Uh, just make noise if you're not a SCAD student. Yeah! <laughs> right, there's a lot of people here. Um, but why, why I keep coming back here every year, is being able to talk to speak with students because they're here because they love art and art is very very important and it's also like the first thing that gets cut when there's budget cuts and stuff i don't know why that's always the case it needs not to be that because art really can't save lives and it does every day so it's a, yeah, i think yeah. um but they want to do what you want to do they want to be up here, you know, whether they're in their mid-20s, sitting with another guy in their mid-20s, talking about the movie that's about to premiere, and, and Savannah, what's the piece of advice you have to give them so that when they wake up tomorrow, they're going to go, oh, I'm going to do what Mikey Madison told me to do, and make it. What is that one piece of advice you want to give them so they can take away with them? I was really lucky earlier today I was able to talk with a bunch of SCAD students for a while and it was so wonderful. I didn't have the opportunity to go to college and so I feel like in that moment I was invited in for a little bit of time and it was really nice to feel the excitement and creativity in that room and also just like the willingness and the, the excitement to want to learn and grow. I think that's one of the most important things as an artist, not just an actor, but in any any form of art is just to always continue being a student, to always want to learn 
and grow your artist practice. I think I said that earlier today, but it really is so important to continue to develop those um, artistic muscles. And so I think never get to a point where you feel like you're, you're good. Always be searching for something deeper and more truthful. Ladies and gentlemen, one last time, get a little rowdy for my team. <laughs> 